reset my drip. We re Hey, what's up guys? Today we're offshore. Finally, we're offshore doing some fishing. The wind has let up a little bit from the past couple days and was blowing over 20 knots. And um, it is a little bit windy today, but that's okay. It's a little bit of choppy conditions too. It looks really fishy. We got plenty of bait, a lot of flying fish everywhere, and uh, we've already got a couple hits. We are currently slow trolling. So hopefully we get a big fish real soon. So I think we're gonna pick up. Right now we're off Ritz. We got two bites, but no fish yet. Oh, I'm blocking the camera. Big, big shot cameraman. But uh, so I think we're gonna pick up a move and probably put the kite up. We want to see what was going out here first. Linda, Linda Mosta, he says, "Hey girl, wish I was there. We could use a driver." Woo! Look at this, we got live fishing. Got it neutral. The drop back. Oh, sailfish! Sailfish right here. Oh, it's shaking, jumping over here. Sailfish! Oh. I don't know how that happened. You broke off? You just broke me off and spit the line all over the boat. Look at this. Right here. Dude, he just did a crazy jump right there. He wasn't hooked anymore. Oh, that sucks. Right there, right there. He's still jumping. Right there. He's got the hook right on his mouth, baby. The bait. We have switched up our fishing techniques now, and we are not slow trolling any longer. We are doing some kite fishing. And I don't think you guys have really seen us do any kite fishing other than in like tournaments and stuff. Um, we're actually kite fishing on our boat today, but uh, we do need a third person when it comes to this stuff. But basically what we're doing is we are drifting and we started in 300 feet of water and we're drifting in and we've got two lines off the backside, one as a free line and then one down deep with the weight and the balloon fisher king clip. And then on this side we've got our kite and we, are, we have two lines out I don't know if you can see what's going on, but you can see our big kite is up there and um, it is suspending all of our, our fishing line out of the water. So everything is out of the water and the only thing that's in the water is the hook and the bait. And we have two baits in the water and there's two floats that we're using so that way we can kind of see where our baits are and what they're doing at the time. And that's really cool because you just see sailfish and kingfish explode on your baits right here. So hopefully we get a bite here really, really soon. All right, we got to spread out now. We, you know, we haven't kite fished in a while, like Darcy was saying. I know everyone's saying, "Oh, you're supposed to have three lines out," but you know, we're practicing with two right now. When we get comfortable, uh, we'll put the other one out there. You know, no problem today or next time, whatever. Turn the clicker off. We are hooked up to a fish on um, we're kite fishing and we're almost ending our drift now because we're in like 80 feet of water about to pull up our lines and reset the drift and we just hooked up to a fish and it was pretty cool. I was watching the short bait get all excited and get on the top and splashing all around and uh, saw the hit. Didn't see what fish it was. It was just a big splash and um, now we're hooked up and the fish went down deep. So I'm hoping it's not like a bonita, but I'm happy it's a fish. So now we just got to get him to the boat. Get him up, get him up, what? What about your gaff cam? Here he is. 
There he is. Benita. Alright. Nice one. He's a big one. Alright, here we go. Ready? <laughs> Alright, we got the fish in the boat. It's kind of not what I wanted, but that's okay. At least we uh, broke off the, uh, wiped off the dust. And now we got a fish in the boat, and now we just got to get a sailfish. We'd love to get a sailfish today, especially kite fishing. And uh, But this is a decent sized one. Put up a good fight. He went straight down deep as soon as he hit my bait, and I kind of knew instantly it was a Bonita just the way he fights. But uh, it's a nice fish, put up a great fight, got me warmed up for a big fish. All right, we're heading out to set up again at the 300 feet. We had drifted into 80, we got that bonita. You're gonna commonly get bonitas when it's <laughs> shallower like that. Uh, it's a little bumpy that we thought it would be, it's supposed to be calming down, but it's not. Nope. <laughs> Darcy's like, nope. But uh, it's not too bad, you can handle it. But just sizzle offshore, can handle it. We're not like you know. We're not like those bass guys. We like to go bass fishing, but we're not bass guys. We're offshore guys. Yeah, we real like, guys. We like those big fish. Big we, fish, big waves. I mean, I like bass too. Don't get me wrong, but I do like catching fish over ten pounds. Yeah, this is you know this is fishing. You know, it's all fun and games, all funny hook sets and everything. That's a good time. But this is what we like. This is it. We're in our element. Me and our sizzle, fighting the fish in the big waves. Yep. We're gonna do an instructional on this kite fishing thing. I'll do a little tackle time real quick, but you can't really do it justice unless you see it in action. Uh, but we'll get there. And we're 186 right now. One day we'll have a third person on the boat to uh, kind of show you how we do it. Yeah, we need a little bit bigger boat. You know, this one rolls around a lot. And um, so, it's, you know, it'll be hard. Plus, it's real windy. Woo! All right. See you when you get set up. Market. 197. All right, I reset my drift. We re blah, blah, blah. all right, we reset our drift, and uh, we set up our kite lines on one side, and we put a deep bait with the weight on the other side, and also a free line. And we just got hit on the opposite side. This is our bait that's down deep with the weight and with the uh, balloon Fisher King clip, and it just took a smoking run. I'm not really sure what it is yet. Um, haven't really felt any head shakes or anything, but we're a little bit more deeper and that's a good sign We got a fish on and hopefully we can get one on the kite here pretty soon back, Right? No, it's king fish. King side hooks. We're gonna get him? Yeah. Hold on. Nice and easy. Nice smoke dip. Um, I'm just gonna hold them up really quick. And you can see here that catching kingfish, their mouths are so soft. Look how he got hooked. He's got two hooks in him right here. He got ripped on the skin. And then the treble hook hooked him back here, almost like he's a live bait, like we hook a live bait, except this hook would be in his nose and this one would be back here. But I was just working him in really slowly because I did not want the hooks to rip out of his skin. With kingfish, it was probably in his mouth initially, and um, it slipped, it came out, and then he got, luckily, he got side hooked like this, and it's actually pretty funny how this happened. <laughs> but uh, we did manage to, to land him, and it's a weird fight when fish come in like this, because they're not hooked by their head, so I knew something was wrong, and I just worked him in very, very slowly. I didn't want to jerk the rod too hard, because those hooks will pull right out. So, um, nice little fish, and that's how you land smoker kingfish for tournaments. You just work them in nice and slow. Uh, but nice fish, I'm getting back on the cut lines. We need to catch a sailfish. I just want to comment a little bit about that kingfish, and you saw how it was like side hooked and, and foul hooked with that treble and even the, uh, the J-hook. 
It's a must add uh, 3 rj J-hook, I think. Um, typically, we like they're a little smaller, but I didn't have any. But anyway, you know, people really like kingfish, and I've had a discussion online a couple times, uh, mainly since we had that kingfish tournament video on the West Coast with our real estate charters at Old Salt. And it was commenting, or several people commented on, you know, while you drag. Low tide charters. Low tide charters. Our real estate was the day before that. Anyway, low tide charters in the Old Salt tournament is who we fish with. And that's not the point. The point is, um, that, you know, some people commented, you know, you don't have the drags up very high, reels are screaming. Well, you know, that's how you tournament kingfish. And like, you know, anywhere between like three and seven pounds of drag, you know, five and six is most common, you know, whatever people like. But the reason is because those kingfish get foul hooked on those treble hooks and you don't know how they're hooked. So you have to reel them in nice and easy. And, you know, the fish goes around the boat a little bit um, or you chase it down. You know, we're kite fishing, so we got a kite spread out, so we couldn't chase it down. And I don't care to chase down a, a, a 10 pound kingfish. I'm not going to do it. Uh, if we lose it, we lose it. But um, that's why you take it in nice and slow, a very light drag, and then you get to the boat. Because again, you don't know where those hooks are when you're using those funny treble hooks. And that's that. Look. <laughs> Wild looking fish. Tackle time. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, now today we did some bump trolling and some kite fishing. And I'm sure a lot of you guys aren't familiar with kite fishing. And I'm going to give you a brief overview very quickly, but we need to do a whole video on kite fishing, which we're going to do, but I can't do it when it's 15 mile an hour winds and Darcy and I are all alone out there. So here we go. All right. First, uh, first fish we, got, we caught was a sailfish. We hooked up with a sailfish and we were just regular bump trolling in and like the last two or three videos, I went over that uh, pretty well, but I'll, I'll show you. Um, uh, well, on that rig, it was just a 40 pound fluorocarbon leader uh, to to a 5.0 Mustad circle hook just to, to a goggle eye with live bait, all right? Now, um, and then we were also had some down lines, and these are the same lines that we have down uh, when we're drifting kite fishing. And I just wanted to show you that sometimes we use this little uh, duster on top, pink, or you can use white or blue, white, uh, blue and white also. But this could just slides over, and this is just your standard kingfish rig. Uh, we got a Mustad J hook up here, and then a treble hook down here. And again, that's like in the last two or three videos, same exact thing, all right? So we trolled this for a little bit to see what was going on with the water and see what was going on with the seas and where the fish were and stuff. And then um, we drift these off the back while we're kite fishing with those weights, which I've showed you many times before as well. Hello. All right, a little boat going by. Um, so that's that. And this is on our accurate Boss Extreme 600. This is one of our kite reels. And we use it for the kite because it has a high retrieve ratio, 47 inches per crank, all right? Yes, and it's narrow too. So you can just crank it up as fast as you possibly can and get that fish to the boat when you're kite fishing. Yeah, and we like the, the narrow is good because in a tri, in a trident with a tripod, right. you have a bunch of reels in there. And you saw that in the video. Yeah. All right. Now, kite fishing. Kite fishing first. We use, this is the kite rod or the, the rod that flies the kite. Very expensive <laughs> kite thing to fly a kite with, right? This is a Daiwa Tanacom Bull 750. Very common kite rod around here. Sometimes you get that 1,000, has a higher line capacity, but whatever. We use a 750. All right. And what kind of rod? I don't know what kind of rod. It's a kite rod. Kite okay, rod. All right. Um, the gist of it is, this snap swivel goes to the kite. All right. And today we use a, a Boston big game kite, that big black kite. Very easy to fly. All right. I, I don't want to hear about all the different kind of kites people like. It's personal preference. I use the big game. Yes. All right. <laughs> Especially when <laughs> I'm a beginner. They have the nice AFCO kites with all the holes yeah. and we all use kinds other kites. of kites. Um, but we stick to the big game. It flies in all winds. Yeah, it's very easy to use, and it goes up uh, anyway. It goes up a little bit higher than, a little bit more vertical than what some people like, but whatever, all right? And then on this line, this braid, there's clips. These are the same clips you might have on an outrigger, all right? The same exact clip, all right? So, a line goes in here, and it goes up in the air. Line goes up here, up in the air. Line on, another third line in here. We only did two today, but typically three. All right, this one goes up in the air. This line has stops. They're wound up on the spool right now, but I stop it and I make this distant, you know, equidistant apart. Like I think right. it's like 50 feet. I think it's like 50 feet. Maybe it's each 40 for each one. So each one of these clips has a different hole. So these go about 40 feet apart, up in the air. All right. 50. Whatever it is. Uh, I, I'm not sure they're 50 feet apart. I feel like it's 30, but whatever. Anyway. Whatever it is, right? They go up. They're very separated. All right. So these are in the air with the lines. Right. All right. Here's a kite rod again. This is that accurate we're using high retrieve. So this goes in the kite in the, on the boat. The line is going through that clip. Yep. I'm going to show you my leader. We're using 40-pound leader, fluorocarbon leader for this, and a 5-0 circle hook. Again, 
The hooks depend on what size your bait, right? You got a big bait, you got a bigger hook, and a little bait, and you got a little hook. Can't get it off. All right, good. Now, some people, there's different ways to rig this. Just to show you guys for curiosity, this little ring goes in the that little clip on the kite rod, right? So it goes up in the air, just goes through, and, this, and then the line can slide through. Then we got a float, right? Yeah, right, exactly like that. And just then it goes, like that. And then it, it goes up, up in, in the air. Then it goes up in the air. All right. Take it off. Yep. Very good. Then you got a float. It's really a marker of this float, so you can see where it is. All right. Then you got a little weight here. I actually need a bigger weight than this today, but this keeps the lines coming straight down. And then the odd part, or the different part that we have today than most people do, is this rubber band. All right. This rubber band, it's very tight right now, but it slides, and we can push this up. Typically, you want to have it, you know, about 10 feet above the water. Right. In competition, they get very strict with this, and they do it differently, all right? Because you need to have, depending on what the rules are for the sailfish competition, usually like 12 foot, 12 foot leader. Um, but, you know, we're not in a sailfish competition. We're just fishing, so we have it shorter. And we have it, this rubber band here, so that when this bobber hits the tip, we can reel it down, okay? It'll slide like this, right? And we can almost get right to the hook. Now, now this way, Darcy and I, you know, it's almost like, it's like a wind-down leader, right? Darcy and I, instead of having 12 or 15 feet, a leader with a fish swimming around, which I gotta leader it and then gaff right. it and blah blah blah. She can control the fish a lot better like this when you're on a small center console boat, not in a sailfish competition, and they're just two people. All right, so that's yeah. why we do it this particular way. I know you kite fish purists, this is some sort of weird thing, blah blah blah. But there's a lot of charter guys, yes, and a lot of wreck guys. They just do it like that. Yeah, right? and we just also had experiences with very long 12 foot leaders and trying to land a monster kingfish in the middle of a tournament. And we can't get that fish to the boat, and all of a sudden, before, while you're like hand lining him in, before you gap the fish, a huge bull shark comes up and crushes your fish. And if you had that wind on leader, you would have already had that well, fish. You know, it makes so it there's easier. different advantages and benefits to right. everything, but that's just one. Right, in a sailfish competition, all you have to do is grab the leader. So you grab the 12 foot leader, you yank it out of the fish, the hook out of the fish, and the fish is released and you're all yeah. set. So that's, that's competition rules. I we was, don't do that. I was talking about kingfish because we do do kite fishing for kingfish as well. Yeah, we caught a kingfish today, not on a kite, but yeah. Anyway, that's how we do it. We like to reel it, be able to control the fish with a wind-on type leader. And that's the end of tackle time. Wrap it up. Yep, yeah, that's the end of tackle time. Uh, check out... Uh, that's the end of Tackle Time. Sorry about that little splurb. Uh, but I hope you like this video. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up for us. If you learned some tips or te techniques, that's awesome. That's exactly what we want you guys to do is learn from us. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Check out the description below. Lots of information down there, including my 2017 Dar Sizzle calendars and also a bunch of other discounts. So check that out in the description below. And subscribe to our channel. New videos every single day. And until our next adventure, follow your dream and keep on catching.